Hi, it's Scott Allen with my thoughts on this week's rugby. I'm going to look at one of the other elements of the Waratahs' attack structure that they used on Saturday night against the Reds. And that is, they seem determined to run the ball from within their own territory, even when they're deep within their own 22. This is after they've just scored their first points, so the score's 3-0. They need to consolidate their position. They actually go through seven phases of playing with the ball inside or just outside their 22. Over those seven phases, they lose 10 metres. And eventually you'll see they have to kick the ball out and the Reds get a line out just outside the Waratahs 22. I'm all for running rugby, but there's a risk-reward ratio that needs to be observed. If you're inside your 22, I think it's a much better option to put the ball out as early as you can, not take the risk of turning it over within your own 22, and then live to fight another day. Here's another example where the Waratahs have achieved a turnover of the Reds' ball, and again, they decide to run the ball from within their own 22. Even if they hold the ball here, there's very little opportunity that they're going to break out and go downfield and score. Safer option, take the kick. Which, after three phases and another loss of 10 metres, is exactly what they have to do. Once again, the Reds get the ball just outside the 22. That could have been achieved on the first phase by the Waratahs. It really makes no sense to me to be trying to run your ball from this deep in your own territory. Now on those two occasions, no real harm done. The Waratahs have got stuck in their 22, wasted a bit of time, didn't really gain any territory, but no major damage. Here, from the kickoff after half time, they again decide to run the ball, and this time on the second phase, they turn it over after a drop by Tom Carter, which puts the Reds in a perfect attacking position. You would have thought that at half time they would have agreed, let's get some field position and get back into this game. Here's another kickoff when the scores have just been levelled at 17 all, and again the Waratahs decide to run the ball on second phase out of their own territory. Another drop ball gives the Reds another good opportunity to attack. No doubt the players are still coming to grips with their new attacking style, but where I've just shown you opportunities where I think they should have kicked the ball. There are other opportunities when they should have run the ball, and you can see here there's a three-on-one outside Drew Mitchell, and although it's a great kick that gains lots of metres, I think they could have gained the same meterage by running the ball and not giving the ball back to the Reds. Here's another example where it's a good turnover at the line-out, and there are opportunities on wide, or just retain the ball and recycle it. Instead, ball's kicked away, and it's a pretty easy regather by the Reds. Here's another example where the Waratahs achieve a turnover of the Reds' ball and there are opportunities on wide or to create momentum, build some field position and it's kicked away again. Once again, that's a wasted opportunity. And here's another example at the end of the game. The Waratahs achieve a turnover, they need to hold the ball now, score a try and earn a bonus point. But as you'll see, the ball is kicked away. Obviously, it's going to take some time for the players to get used to Michael Checker's strategy. But with Berwick Barnes coming back soon, there might be a little bit more control in the midfield, as long as he's bought into the strategy of not kicking the ball away at every opportunity.